Thank you, Chairman, and thank you to the uh, panel for being here. You have all shown, indeed, exemplify significant courage, and we are grateful to you. Um, I would like to propose to all of you uh, the following thesis and ask your reaction to it. The thesis has one broad element and a narrower element. The broad element is that the true clash of civilizations in the world today is between the rule of law and countries that are governed by kleptocracy, autocracy, and criminality. That much of the evil that threatens our rule of law countries arises out of kleptocracy, autocracy, and criminality, and that consequently it is a strategic imperative for the rule of law countries to address the underlying problem of, klepto of kleptocrats, autocrats, and thieves. That's the broad part of the thesis. The narrower part of the thesis is that the kleptocrats, tyrants, and thieves ultimately seek sanctuary for their families, their assets, and themselves in rule of law countries. If you keep your ill-gotten gains in kleptocratic, autocratic, and corrupt countries, you're just waiting for the next bigger thief to come and steal what you have stolen and the quality of life generally sucks. So they need to get out in order to succeed at their game. And here's where it gets a little bit smelly because our laws, our lawyers and other professionals provide and facilitate that very sanctuary. And the most prominent feature of that sanctuary is probably allowing shell and shelf corporations to obscure the identity of the kleptocrats, the autocrats, and the thieves so that law enforcement and the press and others can't follow the connections. Uh, I'll close my thesis by narrowing it right to this particular act because it strikes me that shell and shelf corporations are a very useful device for the corrupt individuals specifically named in the Magnitsky Act to dodge around and find sanctuary for their assets, notwithstanding the law, by going through often sequential series of shell corporations so that ultimately it all turns up in the name of uh, wonderful company LLC someplace, and uh, again, enjoying the protection of rule of law. I'd love to have each of you react to that thesis at whatever level you choose. Mr. Browder, you want to go first? Um, so I think you've, uh, I could have given your speech um, just now. It's, I agree with it 100%. The entire basis for the Magnitsky Act the inspiration for the Magnitsky Act is exactly what you've just described, which is that they, these terrible people um, commit terrible crimes in their own countries, but they're so afraid that their money will be stolen. They want to keep it in countries that have a rule of law, that I want to have property rights and have institutions where they can be physically safe. So the Magnitsky individuals, the ones identified in the law, are really the tip of a much, much bigger iceberg of kleptocracy and autocracy out there and in the same manner that we have paid attention to these individuals, it would be wise for us as a nation to broaden our reach and more systematically address this problem of providing sanctuary for uh, international evildoers. Indeed, and, and, and I, would, I would argue that, that um, we've come up with a good concept, but the devil is always in the details and the devil is always within implementation. And so as you've pointed out, um, uh, people can obscure their ownership. They can do so with fake, pe fake uh, with offshore companies, with no nominees who don't even know their nominees in offshore companies, in, even in America, in Canada, and various places like that. Um, 
There are law firms, the enablers, um, who are actively assisting them with no con earning big fees with no consequences. Um, and, and as and, a lawyer, let me point out that there are also accountants, account of course, realtors, <laughs> yacht brokers, and various other professionals involved in this in these transactions as well. So I don't yes, wanna, the lawyers. I, I don't want to single blame, out the lawyers, but but, but not but, all of it. Yes. But, but the lawyers have played a big role, they have no played doubt. A big role, and um, and, and, I, and I, I would actually. Um, say something that's quite controversial, and we've debated it here in the United States, we've debated it in, in Canada, we've debated it in the United Kingdom as to what should be in the law. The law currently applies to the people who commit the crimes. If you really want to affect these people, um, you should include their family members. If somebody knows that, that um, not only um, will their uh, freedoms be curtailed, but their family members will not be able to send, they, they won't be able to send their kids to, to Ivy League schools, to boarding schools in England. They won't be able to send their parents um, for medical treatment at Harley Street and at the Cleveland Clinic. All of a sudden, there's a, a totally different calculation. And um, if, if that, that would actually seriously raise the temperature of this whole, of this whole and the effectiveness of this whole um, piece of legislation. Mr. Kasparov? Um, yeah, I couldn't agree more with your both broad and, and narrow thesis. Um, actually, it's, it's, we're talking about the system. It's $230 million, as I said, tip on the iceberg. Maybe it's a drop in the sea, because thanks to Bill Browder uh, and, and his efforts, you know, he could discover you know, every penny of this $230 million. But we were probably talking about an amount close to $1 trillion that has been spread around. So uh, using similar schemes of, yep. of, of, of uh, looting money in Russia and parking them, not in China, not in Venezuela, not in Iran, but in this country, in the United Kingdom, in France, and you name it. In the countries, was, as you said, this money is protected by the rule of law. Um, and uh, Putin realized that uh, Magnitsky law was a, an imminent threat to the very foundation of his power, which was based on, on a guarantee of, uh, 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 for, for all members of the gang uh, to loot my, uh, Russia, to steal money there, and to place them safely anywhere in the world they choose. Uh, and uh, by the mafia rule, you have to offer full protection to the last hitman in exchange for absolute loyalty. That's why when I heard the comments from some of the opponents of Magnitsky Law saying, oh, they were just, you know, second, third tier of, of officials, why should we pay attention? It's about principle. Because the moment that one person is not protected anymore, stealing money in Russia and, and, and having them also protected uh, uh, in the United States or, or, or uh, in Europe uh, under rule of law, the whole system will collapse. And that's why Putin was so eager and as is spending massive resources to repeal Magnitsky law and to prevent countries like when open threats to Canadian parliament, just it's, it's, it's unheard. The, the way the Russian parliament and Putin himself acted trying to, to stop Canadians blackmailing them with all sorts of uh, uh, retaliations. Um, and uh, um, it's, um, it's, 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 it's the way this, as you said, is the, it's the, the modern autocrats are working because they want to enjoy the, 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 um, the luxuries of the world uh, that they are fighting uh, with, um, for propaganda purposes. Um, and uh, uh, that's why they are far more vulnerable uh, than, than the communist regime. And I've been saying for a long time, use not tanks but banks. Um, and and they, they found a way of, of, of um, corrupting uh, uh, the Western financial, political, and, and, uh, and business circles by doing it for years. And we have to give Putin credit for just being quite savvy in just finding this, the, the soft, uh, uh, soft spots. And uh, finally, I could say that for those who have been arguing about this openness, saying, oh, if we have this, uh, the, um, the engagement, uh, it will help to uh, sort of lift Russian standards to, 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 uh, to the world's um, accepted rule, uh, um, rules and, and, and laws and regulations. Actually, it worked the other way around. So it's not that Russia uh, um, uh, upgraded its, its, um, its um, rules and, and regulations, but it corrupted uh, the free world that was absolutely open and defenseless against the, uh, the flood of, of these hundreds of billions of dollars um, money stolen in Russia. And I believe the system has been, has been uh, in place in many other authoritarian regimes that followed Putin's model. Mr. Kotler, final thoughts to add? Yes, Senator, I, I appreciated your characterization of the clash of civilizations in terms of the rule of law and uh, the autocracy, kleptocracy, and criminality. 
and that it's a strategic imperative at this point to combat them. I want to say that I think this is being enhanced, both the threat and the imperative, uh, by this resurgent global authoritarianism, by the illiberal populism, and by something we haven't spoken of, but I, I think is becoming uh, particularly worrisome, and that's of democracies in retreat, or the idea of democracy, the institutions of democracy uh, being increasingly questioned, even in democratic countries, uh, aided and augmented by the post-truth uh, universe. And so I just want to uh, bring to your attention something that I think you know, but maybe should be part of our overall internationalization of, of advocacy. And that is recently in Prague in October, a, under the auspices of Prague 2000, which are sort of the heirs of of uh, Vaclav Havel's intellectual and moral initiatives, but, but European and, and American and others uh, gathered together uh, to launch uh, the Prague Declaration for Democratic Renewal. And this P Prague Declaration seeks to address, in a way, uh, what you've been speaking of, uh, Senator, and seeks to mobilize uh, democracies at this point in a coalition for democratic uh, renewal in order to reaffirm the values, the ideas, uh, the institutions of democracy and democratic countries. And I think this is something that we may be able to factor into our work here with regard to the uh, Helsinki uh, Final Act, Justice for Sergei Magnitsky, Case and Cause and the like. Well, thank you for your leadership. I've taken uh, a lot of time, Mr. Chairman. Let me just uh, in closing, thank not only you and the Helsinki Commission for the work that uh, is being done in this area, but I want to recognize CSIS and the Kremlin Playbook document that they put together under the leadership of Heather Conley. I want to recognize the Atlantic Council's work and the uh, Kremlin Trojan Horse <laughs> document that they put together. I want to recognize the Hudson Institute, whose kleptocracy initiative is doing powerful work in this area. So there are a number of important voices that are joining together, and I hope we can take advantage of that broad support to continue to take action against the imperiling cabal of kleptocracy, autocracy, and crime that is a strategic threat to our country. Thank you, Chairman.